thank you so much for coming to our Indian cultural cuisine today. Um, I think you're going to have a wonderful time. I want to introduce to you Dr. Sengupta. He's a professor of engineering at UMass Dartmouth and also is the director of Indian studies at UMass Dartmouth. So he's been a huge help to me and uh, he's going to put on a wonderful show for us. Thank you, Nancy, and good afternoon. Uh, we would like to highlight some aspects of Indian culture, tradition, and of course, cuisine. Uh, I, as I, as you just heard, I'm at UMass Dartmouth, but I'm also a resident of Dartmouth. And uh, from my gray hair, uh, I should have been here earlier. This is my first time, but better late than never. So uh, Nancy asked me to kind of briefly introduce India to, to you all. And uh, we will be, I'll make it very, very short. If you want to encapsulate India in one word, that would be diversity. Geographical diversity, language, uh, costume, attire, um, food habits, all kinds that you can imagine, you will find in India in terms of diversity. And yet, uh, d uh, beneath all this diversity, there is a very strong underlying current of unity. And uh, what we would like to do today is over the next maybe half an hour or so, showcase some um, kind of highlights from, from that very rich civilization. Uh, as, a, as a nation state, India became independent in 1947, but we consider ourselves the, this avatar, this 1947 avatar, only the latest in a continuous unbroken civilization that uh, we, we don't really know how old it is, maybe 5,000, maybe beyond, who knows. But anyway, so, um, it, this culture has uh, uh, highlighted many things. Uh, we will give you some snippets. Uh, we will start with a classical Indian dance item. Now in India, dance was taken to the highest perfection. There is a treatise, which we don't even know how old it is, which gives uh, details about what steps the dancer would take, what hand gestures, he or she would make what eye uh, expressions he or she would invoke. So, very rich tradition. We will start with that. It is called Bharat Natyam. It's a, it's a classical dance uh, that hails from South India. And uh, today, Spurti will present that. Spurti is a uh, graduate student at UMass Dartmouth in the Computer and Information Science Department. And she has been learning this uh, Bharat Natyam since the age of 11. And in our tradition, there is tremendous uh, importance given to the teacher, we call the guru. Guru, of course, is a name, it's a word in English now, but in in the Indian context, guru takes a very significant position. So her guru is Dr. Kripa Fadke from Mysore, um, an Indian state of Karnataka. And uh, this dance item uh, is addressed to Lord Shiva. As you know, in the Hindu tradition, there is this trinity, Brahma, Vishnu, Shiva, the creator, the sustainer, and the dissolver of we call it the destroyer, not really destroying in the sense of annihilating, but so that the cosmic cycle keeps going on and on. So this is addressed to Shiva. The particular name here is Shambhu, and um, it's in, in a raga. In, in Indian classical music, uh, there is a form called raga, which is basically a set of notes, but much beyond that. Uh, the raga is chosen to kind of accentuate the, the dance posture. So this is in the Raga, Revati. 
So it reflects upon Lord Shiva as the merciful guardian adorned with the Ganga. So the river Ganga, as you know, um, it flows through a huge span of India, but mythology holds that it comes out of the locks of this Shiva. So, uh, and the eternal dancer of cosmic harmony. So with that, let us welcome Spurti in a Bharatnatyam item. Spurti. Thank you. 
Thank you so much, Spurtis. So you saw how much dedication is needed to perform this short 10-minute uh, piece. And uh, if you noticed, it, there's an elaborate costume that, is, uh, that has to go. So preparation needed is very uh, long and arduous. So, uh, with, from, from that, we will uh, move a little bit. We will stay with a dance, but now the dance will be uh, folk. So in the one that you just saw, that is classical, very rich tradition, very elaborate grammar. Uh, you have to follow many, many rules. And, and if you notice, the words were in Sanskrit. Now, we will move to uh, Marathi, I mean, uh, the state of Maharashtra, Western India, uh, folk item, it's called Lavani. And because it's folk, it's more informal, uh, but uh, very vivacious, uh, very energetic. And uh, presenting that to us will be Samruddhi. She is a master's student in physics and she has been the cultural secretary of the India Students Association. So for those of you who have been to the Diwali function on our campus, very highly rated program, hundreds of, I mean, more than 600, 700 people come. So uh, Samruddhi is the one who organized the, the, the kind of outline of it last year. 
So with that, let us have a rendition of classic from classical to folk Lavani. Samruddhi. Thank you, Samriddhi. So you got the sense that this dance is also performed in a group uh, and uh, the rhythmic part, as, as I'm sure you must have felt, very strong rhythmic component. Uh, so uh, we take a little bit of a detour uh, from um, dance. We now move to another very prominent facet of Indian life and that is movies. Now, of course, movies, we all love movies. Uh, in India, the, the industry, the movie industry is called Bollywood. Uh, okay? And uh, 
last time I checked, India made five times as many more movies as Hollywood did in a, any given year, okay? So, because of so many languages, so many regions, very rich uh, movie tradition. So, uh, one important difference between a Hollywood and a Bollywood movie is songs. Bollywood movies are full of songs and dances, okay? So, we will now have my colleague, Professor Satya Parayitam. He is a professor in the Charlton College of Business. Uh, and he's also the assistant director of the Center for Indic Studies. But besides all this, he also is a very good performer on the harmonica. So he will present to you a song from Bollywood, uh, and he will give you a little bit more background about the song. Satya. Well, um, there's a song uh, that came in 1971, a uh, very famous song, Meri Sapuna Kirani Kap Ayagitu. That is a uh, <clears throat> uh, very famous that it has been liked by many. I played it at several occasions and I'll play harmonica. Okay? Yes, sir.
Thank you, Satya. So from uh, classical dance to folk dance to Bollywood music, we will return to classical dance, a uh, little different kind. This is called Kuchipuri, and uh, this will be performed by Lalitanjali, who is a uh, master student in electrical engineering at UMass Dartmouth. She started learning this dance uh, from a very young age of eight under the guidance of her teacher, Lavanya Basava Guru. And now she, it started, of course, as a hobby. Now it's a passion. Uh, she will be presenting what is known as Jatiswaram, uh, an essential component of this Kuchipuri style of dancing. Pay close attention to her artistic expressions and, of course, the technical prowess that goes with it. So Lalitanjali. Thank you. 
So much early Tanjali. And now we will turn the tables as it were. All this time you have been watching and listening. Now you all will become, become performers in a sense. So the background to this is that um, we get so many of these visual images, auditory images, they all come to us. But we need some mechanism to harmonize all that and the, the mind we need some mechanism to have some control over the mind mind is so restless and in the indic tradition there has been very deep study of this the mind and um, the, the 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 word that we associate with the most is meditation yoga and meditation they are kind of uh, if not synonymous they are very deeply intertwined um, in the United States, uh, more than 20 million people, they say they practice yoga. So, uh, we will now have a very short meditation session uh, led by my colleague, Professor Jerry Solfin, associated with the Center for Indic Studies. He's a psychologist by training, but a uh, practitioner and a teacher of meditation for many, many decades. And um, he has uh, done similar sessions at nursing homes, hospitals. So I'm sure you will get a, a taste and an appreciation for how deep this particular branch is. So, Jerry. Jerry, Jerry Salfin. I'm a professor uh, affiliated with the Indic Studies Center at UMass Dartmouth. 
um, and I got there um, because of a long time interest in professionally and personally uh, in meditation and yoga. No man or woman <laughs> ever steps in the same river twice. You may have heard that. It means the second time one steps into a river, the river has changed. So it's not the same river. But also, the person who's stepping has changed. Is not the same person. This quote comes from ancient Greece, the Greek philosophers, uh, particularly Heraclitus in this particular quote. Uh, but it brings to mind the fact that we derive ancient wisdom uh, that still holds a certain truth uh, as compelling uh, ideas that uh, that, that help guide our lives. Ancient Greece has gifted the world with many such. But also, it brings to mind that India is the source of much great wisdom that has been gifted to the world. Now, the Heraclitus quote about the river brings to mind that each moment, each instant of time is precious because we live, all of us, whether in ancient times or today, in a changing world. The world is always changing. I am always changing continually. You are always changing continually. Thus, each experience we have, each moment that we can be aware of an experience, the human experience, is very precious. And that is the source of the great Indian wisdom that has been gifted to the world by India. That is a fuller understanding of the human experience through yoga and meditation and uh, a reverence. Um, a, a uh, uh, reverence is the word, a reverence for each moment that we are alive, that we are aware, uh, that we live in this body, this mysterious universe that we occupy within ourselves and with each other, and in our minds, are able to be aware of this, to sit here and talk about it and say, I'm alive. This is one of India's greatest gifts to us. And that gift is through what we sometimes call meditation and yoga. But meditation and yoga are far more than uh, what you may think. Uh, it is volumes and volumes and volumes and volumes of great wisdom that has been passed down and that's accessible uh, at the everyday level uh, by going to the YMCA <laughs> or the YWCA for the yoga night. <laughs> and uh, uh, where you get a, 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 a taste of this. But the, de the deeper knowledge uh, is in our ability to make the most 
of this experience we have of being alive. So I'd like to do a little meditation with you right now. Uh, and we can begin at the moment, uh, right, right now, while I'm speaking, where you are, if you want to gently let your eyes close, that's fine. If you don't, that's fine too, okay? I'd like you to, while you're listening to me, while you're listening to my voice, notice your breathing rhythm. Notice that you are breathing at the same time. And you can follow that breathing while you're listening to my voice, being comfortable where you are. Just notice in, out, breath. Don't change it. Just be aware of it. Be aware of the breath. And being aware of the breath, you will eventually discover that every breath is precious, which you probably already know, but every breath is unique. It's different from every other breath. Just as you are unique. You are different than any other person. But also, even as each breath is unique, it is just a breath. It's not better than or worse than any other breath. It's not good or bad. It is just a breath. So it is both unique, but it's also just a breath. This is an important concept. These two concepts together. And are they form the essence of what we might call meditation. One could conceive of that as being the essence of it. That is understanding the uniqueness and the ordinariness of each breath. And put those two together, and each breath becomes special. So I'd like you to, with me now, take a deep breath in, and hold it. Hold it, hold it, hold it. And then slowly release it. Long, slow release. And notice how you feel. Notice that the breath coming in and out can have a major impact on how you feel, how your body feels, how your mind feels. And it's, it's a stress management practice. Just one breath like that, one deep breath like that, in and out, will create a whole new you. The kind of you that can't step in the same river again. Thank you so much, Jerry. So now it's time for authentic Indian cuisine, but I can't let you go to that table before we would like to thank all our performers one more time. And 
and my colleagues at the front table who have not been very conspicuous but have worked very hard to organize this session for us all. So with that, please. Nirguna para Brahma Swaroop